Hello, welcome to the third episode of Champagne Friday with me, Richie Julian, and the Champagne Club. We started with two great growers, Pierre Peters in Le Menil the first week, Blanc de Blanc, the second week this huge monumental Aiglis Aurier Blanc de Noir from Ambonnet. Today we're changing into what Champagne is mostly all about, the big Champagne houses. Pommery. Just listen to the word, Pommery. Have you seen the chateau, the castle which is made from uh, some replicas from different castles in Scotland? Beautiful place, 30 million bottles in the absolutely white chalk cellars in Reims. One of the best places to visit. Anyway, today uh, it, it was founded in back in 1856 and you know they made the first um, purely dry champagne in 1874 without any dosage at all. Today, since 2002, it's owned by Mr. Branken, the guy from Belgium who took over a big part of Champagne. A lot of resistance from the start, but today a man of honor that everyone respects. The second biggest Champagne group today. 20 million bottles and 5 million bottles of Pommery, the pure uvel in the group. So what could be better than tasting two different non-vintage Champagnes this week and next time? Next week we go into the little bit higher step of the vintage and Cuvée de Prestige from the same house. So, in the left glass, this one, Pommery Brut Royal, the first non-vintage champagne that made me fall in love with champagne. So, let's see, what's in here? It's always two and a half, might be three years of cellar aging from time to time. Little bit too short to make this perfect, because you can age it yourself for five, six more years, and in a good cellar up to 10, 15 years. Always very pure. It had some dips around the mid 90s, but today back in tremendous form, I will say. Approximately one third of each of the three grapes. Let's see what it tastes like today. Classic nose. Very, very gentle, very lightly yeasty, almost even more new, freshly baked bread. Top notes of a lot of different flowers. You, you can sense that it's a very dry champagne, but still there are some caramel notes. Very likable, very pure, very strict and rounded at the same time. There are so many villages in this symphony. It's such a great work to make something from lesser good places, mixing it with really good vineyards, and to have this very typical Pommery style. How can I explain the Pommery style? Well, always a nerve, a very mineralic mid palate and a, and a backbone of uh, very crisp notes. Around that, you have a very rich fruit and some flattering notes on the, on the top of, of uh, your tongue and also a very long lingering finish. And I remember the words of Prince Alain de Polignac who made these wines and owned the house for many years. He said that every bottle of Pommery should always taste like you want to have some more. The taste should go like this and then go up, 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 up. That's his own words. I think it does. Beautiful non-vintage today. A more recent thing when you had um, approximately 10 grams of sugar in the, in the regular Brut Royal, and here we're down to seven. It's a Blanc de Blanc, a pure new coming champagne. It's actually linked to what they did a couple of years ago when they call it summertime, but this is the first time they made a Blanc de Blanc and really call it the Blanc de Blanc. Hmm. Minerality is coming forward, very clear again. You have this, of course, again, typical, like we had in the Pierre Peters two weeks ago, with these white flowers, these lemony notes, but on top of this, some more grapefruit, some more pineapple. Much rounder than that, much more similar to the other Pommery than to the Pierre Peters, despite the great proportions. More elegant, lighter, 
more refinement than the Brut Real. But for me, it would be perfect to have as an aperitif the Blanc de Blanc. Then for the first course, let's go for this Brut Real. 